Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Vero Engineering Synapse Mini, which as you could probably guess is the smallest in the Synapse family. Uh, as of the time of this recording, these are probably not available. They did a pre-order here somewhat recently. Uh, I got my hands on one directly through uh, Vero Engineering. He actually donated this knife for a future giveaway. So thank you very much to Joseph Vero for doing that. Um, if you wait on my actual reviews before you pick something up, a lot of times with stuff like Vero, you're going to be too late. Um, and, uh, you know, I want people to know that the idea here is I'm not reviewing something so that you can go and get it right then and right, you know, right immediately. Uh, that's not going to be the case with everything with some things. Sure. But with stuff like Vero, you kind of have to be ready to go. So if you want to get Vero stuff in the future, just know that this will likely become available again in the future. So I want to make you guys aware of Vero engineering. If you were not previously, I would suggest you follow him on Instagram so that you can get information about future drops and also check out his website. If there's a way to sign up for email notifications, I would definitely recommend that. Uh, thanks again to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on this knife. It definitely is a smaller guy compared to the other knives in the Synapse family coming in at about 6.6 .6 inches, at least by my measurement, the blade length is coming in at about 2.85, which is nice for people who live in an area where, uh, anything three inches or more is illegal. Uh, and then your cutting edge is actually coming in at 2.6 inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see this guy actually is even shorter than the Rat Model 2, but cutting edge is almost the same. Almost. It's still a little bit shorter. Almost the same. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? And we'll do the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here that, uh, yeah, it's actually smaller than both. There we go. I was trying to get them all butt to butt. Sometimes I go pivot to pivot. Sometimes I go butt to butt. <laughs> it's a weird sentence. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like you guys get the idea. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about the cutting edge versus the AD 20.5? Somewhat similar, actually. Keep that in mind. Um, last but not least, let's do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Benchmade bug out. All right, how about we do some size comparisons up against some other Vero knives. I wish I had the regular size Synapse. I don't, I own a Synapse XL, which is much larger. And I also own an Isotope, which is also much larger. I'm sorry, I wish I had other ones to show you. I don't, these are the two that I own. I do like Vero engineering and I do like the quality. I like the design and that's why I own a couple that I paid full price for. Uh, how's the action on this guy? It's very good. In fact, it's exactly the same as my other Veros. It's really impressive, especially considering it's a smaller knife. These are manufactured by Bestec, and it is one of the best examples out there of what Bestec is capable of doing. In fact, when I got my hands on my Isotope, that was the first time that I thought, holy crap, Bestec can manufacture some serious quality, and they can. It's just, it's not always brought out completely in all of the designs that they manufacture. Uh, as far as Vero stuff, not only is it really nice to look at, in my opinion, but it's executed really, really well. So you get really good action. You get really good leverage off that flipper tab. And as you can see there, it has the trademark Vero rectangle, which you can absolutely use to deploy it using the reverse flick. This is one of those smaller knives that actually manipulates really easily. And I think it's just the placement of everything. A lot of times I don't really like small knives. This is definitely a, something I'd call, you know, medium small to small. Like the largest way to classify this would be medium small, but still smaller than what I normally like to carry. It's just nice. This whole area in here is huge and carved out, easy to access. There's no, you know, getting the blade to fall down to your finger without cutting yourself is really easy. And then turning it and shaking it into place is great. The low profile flipper tab allows you to get good leverage on the flip. It's just good. It's just really good. How about carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3? You can see here, this guy is really about the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, you can see here that this guy is very compact. It's not very tall, it's not very long. It's gonna be an easy carry in the pocket. 
As for materials, you do have a lot of choices. If you go to the website, you can see all the old choices and they vary in price. This guy is the belt satin finish. It has the titanium, uh, it's a it's a bolster lock, but it's the tight. It's a titanium frame and then it has micarta overlays. You also have a choice of a hand rub satin finish, a DLC blade. You also have the choice of a stone wash finish, which is gonna look like this, and that's always my preference. I think they do a great job with that. But you have you had a few options there. You also had options for G10, carbon fiber, perhaps something else. I didn't look through every single option. Again, they varied in price. Uh, there is no milling on the inside of this. Not that it really needs it. We're looking at 2.85 inches of blade, and for the weight, we are looking at 2.6 ounces, which means this knife has wonderful ratios. Not gonna be a big object, not gonna be a heavy object, it's gonna be a balanced object, and it is compact, making it pretty easy for just about anybody to carry. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I'm gonna go for a T8 on the pivot if I remember correctly. And we are correct. We also have a T8 lock bar insert screw. We have T8 screws for the overlays or the scales. There's gonna be a couple of additional screws in here, actually one, because you can see this one's gonna go, I think that one goes through to the pocket clipper. There may be a hidden screw back here. But I think there's one additional set of T8 screws underneath there. So uh, pretty minimal. You might have a couple of extra screws, uh, but they're all T8 at least, and the rest of the knife should not be difficult to disassemble. So that's great. I don't have an issue with any of that. Let's check the blade stock thickness. It should definitely be thinner, like as you go down, like here's here it is versus the the XL. It's definitely a thinner blade stock. So it's not like they're using the same, It's it scales down. Uh, blade stock thickness, come on, zero out there, big boy. There we go. We're looking at 116,000, probably 115,000 if I had to guess. So on the thinner side, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. I love the ergonomics of this thing, and I think, honestly, the ergonomic lines of this actually work a little bit better or feel a little bit more natural than the bigger ones because this gigantic area is especially gigantic on knives like the Synapse XL. On this guy, I can definitely get both my fingers in there, right? But it just feels like I have so much space in these areas that are meant for your fingers. It's kind of weird initially finding where where is it that I'm optimally supposed to place, and then you kind of find a reasonably comfortable spot. And I appreciate about uh, that about his knives is that it's not super distinct, but pretty much anywhere you put your hands is going to be comfortable. On the smaller one, you have a much more limited space, but because it is so open, it makes that limited space on a small knife really feel like a much larger. Like I'm kind of confused into thinking that I'm holding on to a knife that has a much longer blade because I've got so much room on the handle. Once again, the only thing that I am feeling is the pocket clip. This isn't a bad pocket clip. I just don't like the goose bill. It's kind of like what I say about Civivi clips. Everything else is about the knife is so good that the pocket clip to me, at least in this case, ergonomically, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Now, the difference between this pocket clip and the Civivi pocket clip is that this pocket clip is nice to look at, and it actually follows the lines of the knife, which is probably why Vero is reluctant to change it. Um, if I had it my way, which I won't, right? Vero's under no obligation to do what I <laughs> suggest. I would not have this come down and then abruptly change angles. I would have it swoop and instead of this flat part of the bill right here, I would have it end right there and then just round it off. You could, It could still follow the lines, but it would be a little bit, it would just look to me a little bit better and I, I don't know that it would function that much better. I think it would just be preferable. And when I say preferable, I mean ergonomically. I think it would also help out a little bit if the pocket clip wasn't so long. When you're gripping like this, you're gonna feel this going into your hand because this area is so pronounced. I think it probably could even be knocked off right about there. Another thing that I like about the clip though, and you know, I think this is actually, I don't know if this is a new thing or if it's, it's the same way in mine. We have these little milling lines in here and they look really nice. I love it when I can zoom up or look really closely on a knife or at a knife and see that there are little details. Actually, now I wanna, well, I have the Damascus clip on this one. How about, with this one, no, that one also has a Timascus clip. So I don't know, I don't know. But I do like how this looks, for sure. It's uh, it's nice to see details like that. Let's go ahead and zoom back out here and get back out into the standard zoom, I guess. 
Uh, the rest of the knife, it's really, I mean, it's a scaled down version of his other designs. Uh, the flipper tab is still very low profile and it works exceptionally. This area right here can actually be, you know, you, well, it can, the same way as the other knives, it can be used as a choke up position, which is probably the most preferable. Back here, this is really like a three and a half finger grip for me. So I like this grip right here and that's nice. You can get right up behind the edge. Uh, the edge comes down to a pretty darn, I mean, it's it's pretty darn thin down here. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, we've got a flat that comes, this is a pretty typical, you know, just a drop point blade, which works really well with the aesthetic of this of this knife. Uh, we have a flat that carries out maybe 55% of the length of the blade. We have a nice swedge. We've got a nice tip. You can see right there, tapers down to a pretty fine tip. Uh, the final cutting bevel is perfectly even on both sides of the knife. His satin finish looks really good, or Bestex satin finish looks really good, but again, I just prefer the tumbled finish. The hand rub satin finish also looks good on these knives, and so does the DLC. Honestly, they all look good. When you are working with a finish that is not tumbled, uh, you're going to get kind of a sharp, Not it's not sharp like you're going to cut yourself, but it'll definitely shave your fingernails off. Right, so it might be a little uncomfortable while you're doing draw cuts. If you've got a lot of dead skin, you're going to feel that catching, right? But it's not really anything that... I always feel funny complaining about that. It's not really that big of a deal. The edges of this little rectangle right here, sorry for shaking the camera all over the place, are nicely chamfered. So it's pretty, you know, comfortable to do your reverse flick and there's plenty of room to get in there. I like to dig my fingernail in there uh, and fire it that way. So that's nice. The jimping extends to a reasonable area, right? If you're choking up like this... You're gonna be fine if you put your thumb out here, it's gonna be a little bit slippery, but no big deal. Plenty of access in here for the frame lock. I think I pointed that out. This uh, natural micarta looks pretty good. Like I said, they had a lot of options for handle material. I don't know which one I would have gone with. This one isn't bad, um, but like I said, there were a lot of options. Something that I always prefer, about, oh, what's the blade steel by the way? It's M390. I don't know if it actually says anywhere. Um, it does say the serial number right here. So this was number 14 for the batch. Um, there was something else that I was going to, oh, something else that I really appreciate about Vero uh, Designs is that he keeps his logos off of all of the places that we really don't want logo. Like, he doesn't put a bunch of crap all over the blade. He doesn't put, like, the serial number and the blade steel in this big weird font. He doesn't do any of that. He just makes the blade look nice. You can enjoy all of this. The only place where you see his logo or any information is actually on the spine of the blade and on the pocket clip, which truthfully looks really good. I kind of like that I see his logos there. It's just a good, stylish place to put that stuff. Said that about his other designs, and I still feel the same way. We have a pretty simple titanium backspacer here, and it looks good. Uh, everything, you know, is pretty flush, pretty almost seamless, right? I mean, it's the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, everything, I mean, as far as fit and finish goes, it's typical best deck. Uh, it is executed essentially flawlessly. I love that there's no, you don't see the screw up here. It either is, it's either this and goes all the way through. I think that's the way that it is. Um, yeah, in fact, I'm 99% certain that's the way that it is because it's, I think it's like that on my other ones. Um, and then this is actually recessed into the micarta, which looks great. This is a full milled clip, which is nice. The retention is good. And like I said, it functions pretty well, right? I'd give it a B or so. It's a decent clip. I just wish that it would be a little bit different, a little bit shorter. Uh, steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop, which is nice. Uh, your stop pin is actually located uh, internally and it's attached to the blade, which means you have two points of contact versus one point of contact on a traditional stop pin. I try to point this out. It's just a it's just a bar. Can we see it? Right there. It's just one point of contact. When you have lugs like this that are attached to the blade on either side, it contacts this side of the frame and this side of the frame, which offers really good stability. And at the same time, you can get nice smooth action, which this does have. No pivot lash, did I say? Solid lockup. No pivot lash, no lock stick, consistent action, and a nice clicky detent with perfect centering. No detent lash, did I mention that? I can't remember. Yeah, I like this. This actually translates really well as a small knife. It's a good looking knife and it works. You know, sometimes when a, a, you know, a knife designer decides to make like every size to cater to a wide demographic, either the, it's, the big one is just ridiculous, or the little one is just too small. Uh, but uh, I think these knives, unless you know, you're know you somebody who truly has absolutely monstrous hands, 
These are gonna pretty much work for everybody, right? And in some situations, you might not wanna be carrying around a gigantic knife. I know that I found, even though I love big knives, I found that sometimes I just need a little knife. I don't wanna be carrying a gigantic knife to some settings. This works. What were the prices on these? So the, the base price, like if you got the most basic version, which would be like G10 and your uh, stonewash finish, it came in at 310 bucks. I think some of the more expensive ones went all the way up to 355, 365. His prices have you know always been a little bit higher than a lot of the competition. He does offer a lot of really unique design elements and some really good execution. Uh, that you don't find in a lot of his competition. So, you know, it's the reason that I own two is because I think they bring something better to the table than this general price zone. That being said, with this knife, I really wish, I, I was really hoping to see that it was no higher than 275. It feels a little bit high. It doesn't feel completely and totally outrageous. You know, we're gonna get the typical comments, typical people saying, uh, it's just micarta, titanium, and M390. I can get those same materials from another company. I would argue that the execution with these materials, which is definitely an element that you have to consider uh, you know, when you're looking at the final price tag, I would argue that the execution and design here is definitely better than a lot of those other knives that people might try to compare with. For me, it's a little easier to spend a little bit more money on a Vero because I know that I'm gonna get that consistent quality. It's gonna be really good. There's not gonna be lines that don't make sense. There's not gonna be areas that are you know, loosey-goosey or just not meeting up correctly. Everything just looks good, right? The people who do pick these up, you're gonna be super duper satisfied with them. Uh, if you are looking for a premium knife in this territory that is on the smaller side, um, this is a good one to, you know, if he releases them again. You know, I, I'm not offended by that price tag, but I, I just wish it was a little lower. All in all though, this is definitely a recommendable knife. And because of its size, it's recommended to a much wider variety of people. I mean, it's legal and more compact, easy to carry. Uh, I really, again, just the two things that bother me just a little bit are the length of the clip, the, sh the design of the clip, how it comes down and we have this big goose bill, um, and then pro the, the price a little bit. Like I said, 275 would have felt a lot more appropriate, but what are you going to do? It's hard to judge things now that inflation is just affecting everything. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know that there's really a whole lot more I can say. This is really, really good stuff from uh, Joseph Vero. And this knife will eventually be given away on a live stream. So if you're not subscribed and you want to be a part of that, make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on uh, and you might have a chance to win it. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. This will go on my most recommended knives playlist. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.